I'm joining. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Happy Sunday and happy start to spring. Um, if you're joining in from Facebook or YouTube, then let me know where you are watching from, what you're doing today. We are making today this. I'm a little late to get to camera today, so I'm still scrambling, getting things, getting things organized. We are making this sweet potato lentil loaf from Drina's Kind Kitchen. Here we are. And, um, oh, there's one more thing I wanted to show you. Hang tight, hang tight. Okay, I'm just gonna pause and take a breath. Ah, and get a tea. Okay, hang with me, please. It's been that kind of day. I was busy. I went to a nice hot yoga class this morning and then to get the dog out to get his nails done and get groceries and then got lunches and now just getting geared up here. So what are you guys doing today? Are you having a good day? Is it like spring where you are? Because it is Hella cold here, sorry. <laughs> it is cold and damp on the wet coast. Wet coast of Canada anyways, in the Vancouver area, it's cold and it does not feel like spring. I'm freezing my ass off, there we go. I want to get to Hawaii. <laughs> so again, hook me up people, hook me up. Hawaii, I'll take Arizona. California, anywhere warm. Okay, so I've got my tea and I have my nipple. Guys, did you pick up the nibble from my last, well, it was two videos ago. If you did, I want to know what you're enjoying, like what your favorite chocolate is from your little collection. Whoops. I'm really enjoying this variety. This is the um, Dominican Republic chocolate, and this is the 82, 85. The other one is 72. This is the 85%. Hmm. Hmm, that's the first chocolate I've had today. No, it's not. No, it's not. It really makes me happy. Um, yeah, let me know which one you're enjoying. And I did put the link there again in the description for Nibble. For um, You can get 10% off with my name, Drina Burton in caps. And... Oh, it's just so good. And I also put the link for midday squares because I'm out of them. <laughs> I need to get some more. Um, but if I had it today, I'd probably have a little of both. And you can get 15% off with midday. And I, you don't need a code. Just link through. Get 15% off and mm -mm, enjoy. Okay. So stay with me. There's a giveaway at the end of this broadcast. And... Um, I'm going to, I think I'm going to give away something different this week. So stay with me. And this episode is brought to you by Drina's Kind Kitchen, since we are featuring a recipe from the book, the sweet potato lentil loaf. And that is the, the other recipe that you're seeing there is the pumpkin seed pesto, which is so Good. And as summer comes, you know, once we get into summer, I'm going to feature this one because I rarely make pesto now with um, nuts or pines. Like traditionally, it's often made with pines, uh, pines, pine nuts. <laughs> I wanted to say pine seeds. Uh, I love it with different seeds. So anyhow, we are getting into this recipe. This is so easy. And the reason I wanted to make this for you today is because one, I had ingredients in the fridge that I needed to use. I'm going to get to that and explain. Two, this is an easier version of my nofu loaf. So if you love my nofu loaf, this is what I was going to get. My rummaged copy of Let Them Eat Vegan. And there's a lot of papers in here because I am redoing some of the recipes in Let Them Eat Vegan. And I'm going to release it in an ebook format. The reason for that is... Again, a couple of reasons. One, my cooking's evolved a little bit, right? So I want to offer these recipes to you with oil-free options. Not all of them, but sort of the sort of some of the favorites, I guess, and certain ones that I would like to redo for you. So I'm going to redo them to make them 
A, easier, B, oil-free, and C, all with photos. Some of you know that my last publisher, not my current publisher who did Drina's Kind Kitchen, reprinted this in black and white, which is really shoddy, guys. I'm so disappointed with them. It's kind of out of my hands, but that means the color photos are also black and white. So yeah, pretty, pretty shoddy. So in this book, I have, whoops, a pen, the Nofu Loaf. And this one has been really popular with you guys for years since this book came out in 2011. That was a long time ago. So these are all my recipes I'm redoing or so far. I think I'm going to release the ebook in two parts, do some of the recipes, release, and then get two more. And um, when I did Dreamless Kind Kitchen, I wanted to make a lentil loaf that was faster than that one because that's a great recipe. Like everyone that has tried it, at least to my knowledge and what I hear from people is that they really love it. But it takes a little time of sauteing on the stove, combining in the, uh, actually no, the food processor is not used for that one, but it just takes a little cook time. This one, everything in the food processor into the loaf pan and you're done. Um, I'm just seeing everyone join in. Hello, hello. Um, so nice to see you, Leah and Rhea. I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Um, oh, good. And Leah said she's been obsessed with midday squares. Yeah, I know. They're so good. My husband ate my last ones. What a bugger, right? What a bugger. I hide them. And I say, when I get my, because I get the sample pack. And when I get it, I say, okay, you can have these ones. These ones are mine. He still ate them. This is why I hide things, guys. Anyway, savages in the house. So we are going to get to this recipe. And here's what um what we're doing so normally in this recipe and i will read out the ingredients for you okay so it's just stay with me and i'm going to read out the ingredients normally we used cooked lentils cooked brown lentils pretty simple my favorite option for cooked brown lentils and this is for all of you in the states you know this are these trader joe's lentils french lentils they have an excellent texture and they have a nice flavor. There are some, there's a little bit of, there is some salt in here. So if you're using this, you might want to cut back on the salt or the, well, it's tamari in the recipe, but you might just want to note if you want to reduce some of the sodium in the recipe. Um, but they have a great texture and flavor and so convenient. These I picked up when we had that little break. <laughs> A little break in November to hop over the border. I got a bunch of these and I put them in the freezer, but they are stored refrigerated. So if you buy them regularly, you know, they're so handy. You can just keep them in the fridge, open them up, use them in recipes, boom, done. So I used them a couple of nights ago to make a lentil dish. And what I did was I had a lot of button mushrooms on hand and I said, okay, I want to use the mushrooms and I'm going to use some lentils. By the way, a quick thaw of the lentils take them out of the box because it's in a it's in a like a plastic package inside the box hang on so here's the package <laughs> i'll get there right to quickly thaw this put it in a small dish and keep filling the dish with hot hot water and it will thaw it really quickly for you and then you can break it apart, okay? So I made this dish really simply the other night with, I had these mushrooms that needed to be used and I decided to saute the mushrooms on a really high heat. So mushrooms have a ton of water, right? So you don't need to add, um, when I cook mushrooms stove top, I put them on a high heat because I really wanna get the liquid out of them, get some sear, get some color on them. And if you cook them on a low heat, they just kind of wilt and they don't take on any color. So that's just a little tip for cooking mushrooms. So I use these, they were actually cremina mushrooms and I sauteed that with red onion. And what did I add to it? I have to remember now. I added, oh, I had some like seasoning in the, had some dry seasoning that I decided to use. Uh, sort of like a vegetable stock. 
And then I added balsamic. I really love to cook onions and mushrooms in balsamic. It helps develop some flavor and some color and just cooked it up and then added the lentils after. And so it's not looking too appetizing. I mean, some of the tastiest vegan food is not always the most beautiful, right? So we had this with um, potatoes and a salad. So really good, everyone loved it. And I had like a uh, drizzle to put over it. But now I have the leftovers and I was gonna make burritos with it. And I thought, no, I'll do my lentil loaf. So that's why I'm using this now. Instead of using those lentils, I'm going to renew, right? Refresh this dish. So I do this a lot in Drina's Kind Kitchen. I call it recipe renewal. You can see it right here in the lentil loaf where I say you have leftovers, try this. You have leftovers of this dish, do this with it another night. So I offer that a lot in the book to help you get it used to the you know, habit of repurposing your leftovers that they don't have to look the same way, they don't have to be served the same way, and really the save on food costs, not wasting food, and getting a little creative. It's fun, it's, you know, and this is the time of year to be creative. Uh, spring really speaks to our creativity uh, in this season. It's very um, inspiring for us. So I could get on in that, that a little bit more. It's sort of yoga talk for me. <laughs> so. I'm going to use this in place of the lentils. So we it calls for two cups of cooked lentils. This is going to be more than two cups, but I'm going to go ahead and use the full amount. However, we start with just a cup. So I'm modifying slightly because I know I can adjust the texture. But when you're making it home for the first time, follow the recipe as is. Oh, you guys can't see that. Hang on. Hang on. So there we go. So this is my um, Breville food processor. And this is a great one because it's, let's see this, whoop, it's um, 16 cup. So it can take a lot of food. So it can take a lot of content for making veggie burgers. If you want to make nice cream, if you want to make um, hummus, you can like quadruple a hummus recipe and then freeze batches. Like it's so handy to have a big processor bowl. And this one has been with me for a few years. So it served me pretty well. Um, I did put the link to my, to an Amazon page that has all the different cooking equipment that I use at home. Just if you want, guys want to check it out, see which one it is, it's there for you. Okay, so we add this and then I've got to start following the recipe, guys. Take my own advice. We need to cook a cup of cooked sweet potato. So we're using two cups of lentils and then a cup of cooked sweet potato. I normally use orange. I had some yellow sweet potato that I wanted to use. <laughs> that might have chocolate on it now, so I have to wash it. So this is like yellow sweet potato, which in the US it's called Hannah sweet potato or Japanese sweet potato. So that's what that is. I'm a little shy of a cup. So here's what I'm gonna do. I made some sweet potato wedges fries the other night. I have those left over. So again, I can use these. I don't need to bake a whole other sweet potato to make up for that amount. These are just little sweet potato wedges. So I'm just gonna take the peel off because the peel's a little, you know, it's kind of coarse. And use that, break it up. My dog is gonna want that. Oh, it makes a difference. So kind of think in that way, right? Do I have something that I can use? So that's going to go in here. That's a cup. And the sweet potato adds texture, flavor, body. It's, you know, it's, it's wonderful. And also, you know, if you're, you know, you have family members that don't really like sweet potato, this is a nice way to get it into a dish. You're not hiding it. I don't hide it. I use it in a way that it contributes a texture or a flavor, okay? And I think that there's also white potato in here, yes. So it's a half a cup of cooked red or Yukon gold potato. Now, if you don't have that, go ahead and add in more sweet potato. I do, because I almost always have cooked potato in the fridge because I batch cook potato, sweet potato, quinoa, rice, like those are sort of like key things that I always 
cook in larger amounts. If I'm making sweet potato fries, I always make more than I think we'll eat, which that's a lot <laughs> because they eat a lot of sweet potato fries, but I always try to make more. And if I'm baking them, I bake more than I think again we'll eat, at least hopefully. Okay, so I'm gonna just get a little white potato now. And it's just a half cup. So here's my, you know, it doesn't look too happy right now. It's just a chilled baked potato, but it will serve the purpose. This is a Yukon gold, or is it a red? It's a red actually. And you could use russet. I just find the texture is much nicer for most things using Yukon gold or red. So I know that's about a half cup. So I'm just going to break that up, pop that in. And then we have to add everything else. So we've got tomato paste, we've got a quarter cup of tomato paste, and I promise I will read out the ingredients to you again after. Like at the very end, I'll read it all out. So tomato paste is gonna add really nice umami. That's one of these flavor elements. Tomato paste has a good umami in it. And we're going to be adding some balsamic, flax meal. Yeah, I've got a whole bunch of stuff to add. So I'm just going to start adding it and read it out to you after. Okay. And the reason we're not adding all of the lentils right away, I will explain that to you. Two, three, three tablespoons of tamari. I could have had this all measured out, but I was really rushing today and three tablespoons of dried onion flakes. So here's the thing with the onion. The reason I use the dehydrated onion, it's a couple of reasons. I have a couple of reasons for everything, don't I? <laughs> so any dehydrated onion, like it can be the larger flakes or this. This is magical to me because not only does it add onion flavor and you don't have to saute onion, this will also absorb liquid because it's dehydrated. So when I'm adding it to this and I'm adding tamari and other liquid elements for flavor, it could make the loaf very watery, right? Too, too moist to slice. But the onion and some other ingredients I'm going to add help soak that up and adds flavor, okay? So that's the key there. So it's nice to not skip that. You could add green onions if you want. And what else? Oh, I need a clove of garlic. I just brought one out. So with garlic, this garlic is not being cooked um, beforehand. It will be cooked in the loaf, but sometimes that flavor can be really strong. So I'm adding one clove. You know, again, if you love garlic, add more. But I always find with something like, that is not a happy looking clove of garlic. With something like this, and veggie burgers, especially with veggie burgers, where you're usually just pan frying them for maybe 10 minutes or baking for maybe 15, 20 minutes, the garlic can be really strong. That's better. There, and I usually just cut it like once and then let the food processor do its magic. Um, flax meal, so two tablespoons of flax meal. If you don't have the flax meal, you could just add another seed or you could add about a tablespoon of chia. I find chia absorbs much more than flax. So maybe a tablespoon of chia and we need balsamic. So all these components are adding flavors, right? Deeper flavors to the loaf. Balsamic, and now I'm also going to add some dried herbs, and there's one that isn't in the recipe, but I want to add it today, and that's fennel seed. So fennel seed, I really like it with bean dishes that have an Italian kind of flavor profile. So if you're doing a marinara or a, say like a ragu kind of sauce, it's really nice in that. Even if you're just doing a standard... Um, like, okay, so if you take a jar of tomato sauce and you want to add some lentils to it and cook it up, it's really nice to add a little of this. It pops the flavor. It's really nice in, in that kind of theme of, of recipes. I'm just going to add like maybe a half teaspoon and then some dried, whoops, dried oregano. I think I mentioned in the, 
in the recipe that you can add fresh. I do. And I will read all this out to you after dried oregano. Whoops. So the fennel is not in the recipe, but I just kind of felt like I wanted to add some today. And it also helps with digestion of beans. Fennel seed is good for digestion. So sometimes you find fennel teas in store and um, like in the grocery store. And fennel is really good for your digestive system. So I figure it kind of helps with the digestibility of beans too when you add it to a bean dish like this, a legume dish. Talking away, what else do we have? Celery seed, a half teaspoon of celery seed. You really don't like celery seed, you don't have to use it. I'd say this one is very optional. It's definitely optional for me because I can't find it <laughs> where we are. There we go. Kind of adds that flavor note of celery without cooking it down or adding it. And then some pepper. So we're not adding any salt because we have a fair amount of salt with the turmeric. Um, you can add some if you want, but you're getting some of that flavor in there, like the sodium, the saltiness. Okay, so we're going to puree this first, and then I'll explain why we add the other things after. Just got to scrape this down. I could do two loaves in this processor. Like, I could actually double the batch and my this processor is big enough to handle it. And then just again, you know, it's a sticky mixture, so you kind of have to work it back towards the blade a few times. Sometimes I do this too, I just lift it up, let the mixture shift around in the bowl. garlic incorporated if you haven't chopped it up which I did not so that's why I continue to work this mixture because I don't want big chunks of garlic in the puree okay so this is the base so this is kind of the base of our lentil loaf just going to give it one more blitz And now we're going to add the remaining lentils and rolled oats and some pumpkin seeds. And the reason why I didn't add it all at once is I want some texture. So if you add all the lentils right away and puree them, it's fine, but it loses some texture. If you add half of it, puree it, and then add the remaining components, it leaves some texture. So it's just... It, it's just that quality of something a little more interesting, right? It's not all mush. <laughs> it's not all mush. Let's say that. And how many cups do I have left of this mixture? I'm going to try to get mostly the lentils, which is going to be hard because there's actually a lot of mushrooms in here. And what I might do is put the mushrooms on top of the loaf. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to scoop around and get more of the lentils. So last week, guys, when I did my video, I pulled a muscle. <laughs> and um, it's funny now. I'm still kind of recovering from it. So if you were with me last week, you remember I was trying to open this jar. This jar of, what was it? Brown rice syrup. I was making granola. And not only was the brown rice syrup, like, in the garage, so it was kind of cold, so the top was cold, it was also a bit sticky. It had leaked, I guess, into the lid. And so I didn't run it under water right away, hot water. That's the little trick, right? Run the jar under hot water so that the lid, the metal expands with the heat and helps release the jar. If you guys don't know that trick, that's like one of the few things I remembered from science. Um, well, not one of the few. I'm going to give myself a little more credit than that. I like science. And uh, so... I then ran it underwater and opened it. But afterwards, I was like, oh, my gosh, I, uh, I pulled a muscle like right behind my shoulder blade. It's amazing when you do something like that, how much you realize like you 
appreciate your mobility. The next day I couldn't teach yoga because I, I was like barely moving this arm. I was like, oh my gosh, it hurt like heck to move it. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm not gonna pull anything today. I'm gonna tell myself that. There's the lentils. And we're adding two cups of rolled oats. Rolled oats are also going to help bind the mixture and add texture. Coming back with the rolled oats right here, right now. I don't want to put the measuring cup in the oats because I just measured out something with it. Potato, I think. Yeah, sweet potato. So I'm just adding the oats like that. It's two cups. It is two cups, I think. Yeah, let's hope. And then um, a quarter cup of pumpkin seeds. Oh, I forgot my tahini. Okay, so you, I don't have tahini today, so I'm going to use um, pumpkin seed butter. So hopefully this will get mixed in fairly well. I'm just going to use a little bit because I'm afraid it won't get mixed in too well. Tahini is what is normally in the recipe and it's really nice, but I forgot it. So I'm actually gonna pulse this a tiny bit now with the pumpkin seed, with the pumpkin butter and then add the pumpkin seeds. So you just pulse it. At this point, you just pulse it. Get the rolled oats incorporated, just pulse, pulse, pulse. Um, you know what, if you had a cooked grain, you could also substitute like say half the amount of oats with a cooked rice like something that's a, a sticky, not not a, a grain that has too much moisture in it. So I wouldn't use quinoa. I find quinoa doesn't bind very well, but a short grain rice, for instance, would work well. And maybe half of the oat mixture with that. Okay, and now I'm gonna add some pumpkin seeds. It's a quarter cup. I'm just gonna eyeball it. There we go. And then again, the pumpkin seeds, we're just pulsing them in because we want to keep some texture. And it's really nice to have that little crunchy texture in there with it. And then that's done. See that, guys? I mean, I talked a lot through that, but you could literally do this, get your ingredients out on the counter, and you could put this together in about 10 minutes. I think you could do this in 10 minutes. You have the ingredients on hand, you're ready to go. There. And now we transfer it to a baking dish. So I have a baking dish and I line it with parchment. And I also just wipe the inside with a little smidgen of oil. So don't shout at me about the oil. <laughs> the thing is, guys, the amount of oil that you will use to wipe the inside of a dish, it's probably about a half teaspoon, quarter teaspoon. It's insignificant in terms of your consumption, but it will help you release the loaf, or if you're baking, release a banana bread or any other kind of quick bread, okay? It's it's like really helpful. But I also line it with parchment so that I can lift it out like so. Boop. When it's it's gotta cool a little bit to do that. So we're gonna get this in. And this is a nice hearty big loaf. It fills the pan pretty well. Let's get that like that there. And then I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with the mushrooms on top. So see, here's the mixture. Looks very hearty, right? It's got great aroma. I can smell it right now. And I can still see some lentils that are whole. I can see some, the oats have some texture and the pumpkin seeds. Yeah, I was in a lot of pain from my shoulder last week. I still can't believe like how much it's hilarious. No, well, it's not hilarious. It's just shocking that you can do like I did hot yoga in the morning. I've been doing a lot of hot yoga that you can do these exercises where you're pretty strenuous and then do one of those small, like meaningless almost <laughs> movements in the day, something that's random and it throws you off. But I think it's because you don't have that mindfulness, right? You're just kind of moving about and not thinking about it. Whereas in yoga, you're very conscious of your, your movements. Okay, so there's the loaf. Now we can top it with a few things. I give notes in the recipes. 
If you have more sweet potato, you can mash it and add it to the top and sprinkle some salt. You can use a combination of ketchup and barbecue sauce. I'm going to add ketchup today and I'm going to slice up those mushrooms and sprinkle it on top or on part of it because I have one mushroom here, right? So here we go. Just going to get the ketchup. If you don't want to use ketchup, then don't use it, right? <laughs> it's your call. Uh, I have to measure there, but I just do this when I make it. And then I'm going to take these mushrooms and chop them up a little bit. Get this out of the way. And I figure, why not, right? I have these extra mushrooms. If I added the, all of those mushrooms to the loaf, they might make it a little bit loose for slicing. Not too much, but just pop them on top. And so like I really encourage you guys to think outside the box like this when you're cooking because you know we have these things in the house and if we leave them or in the fridge if we leave them too long we don't really use them they end up in the garbage uh, or in the compost for us and you know you could salvage them right so something like this you could work into a burrito you could layer between lasagna you could process this directly add some oats and make little meatballs boom so i'm you know, encourage you to do these things. So you see what I'm doing? I actually have a lot of mushrooms, but I'm adding them to about most of the loaf and leaving a little bit without because Hope is not a mushroom person, or at least not yet. My other kids were like that. They didn't like mushrooms right, right away. And I'm just gonna add some more pepper on top of the mushrooms. And I'm also gonna add a little balsamic drizzle on top of the mushrooms. because I think that would be really good. And then, when it's time to bake. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna pop it in the oven now. Baking instructions are you cover it and bake it for like a half hour and then take off the foil and let it brown on top. I'm gonna to start baking it without the foil so that hopefully it will brown up a little bit and I can show you how it will look finished. Well, I can also show you the photo, but I kinda of wanna show you. Okay, I'm gonna get this in. It's definitely going to look different than the photo because it has the mushrooms on top. But you know, I want to use them up. Okay, so I'm going to let that cook about 10 minutes. Whoops. Oh, shoot. This oven, I swear to you, I keep programming it incorrectly. I'm just going to time it for like 10 minutes, check questions, and then I'm going to get a chair though and chill out with you guys. All right. Okay. All right, I'm going to check the questions here. Um, <laughs> Lee, it is rude that he eats my chocolate. Thank you. Uh, canned lentils. Denise, yes, you could use canned lentils. Just make sure you drain them well because canned lentils tend to have a lot of liquid and you don't want extra liquid in this. If you have extra liquid, it's going to make it mushy and it, it just won't set up. Um, you'd have to add a lot of oats. So drain those lentils really well. I do prefer, in terms of canned beans, I use mostly canned beans except for lentils. I really prefer cooking lentils. It's just a thing. So either I'll, I'll buy those French lentils because they're like cooking yourself or I will cook green or brown lentils for this dish, but you can just make sure they're really drained. And Cindy's saying she loves that food processor. Yeah, it's a good one, right? Um, <laughs> that is the other reason I used minced onion. Thank you, Cindy. Cindy mentioned, uh, we know how much you love chopping onions. Exactly. I really hate chopping onions. So this is also a really nice option. Not only does it absorb the moisture and add flavor, um, you don't have to chop onions. And um, hi, Cindy. Somerville saying she missed the notification. Oh, she's making the chocolate zucchini loaf. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so hopefully you've caught up. We're making the sweet potato lentil loaf. 
cooked millet instead of oats. So Amber's asking, what about cooked millet? So I did mention um, using a sticky grain. I think millet would work pretty well. Um, it's not as sticky as rice, but it's preferable to like quinoa. So I would use, personally, I would use half the amount of oats to sub with a grain because you still want, those oats are still gonna absorb some of the other liquid components in the loaf. So if you don't add any, your loaf is probably going to fall apart when you try to slice it, okay? Uh, hello everyone, Louisiana. Is it warm in Louisiana? I swear, I wanna move anywhere warm. Like my goal is to get to Hawaii one day, it really is. If I could live in Hawaii, and I think I, that would just be my dream. That's my dream. I want to live in Hawaii, so keep putting it out to the universe. Um, and, oh, nice. I don't really quite know what your name is. It says uh, Bear, Bear and Girl 63. She bought the book. We'll look up the recipe. It is on page what? If anyone has the book, let me know. Because this is the preview copy that we had for before the book came out to give to media and it has some sample recipes in it. So I don't actually have what page it's on in the book. Um, and hello, Pam. She does not have a food processor. Huh. Um, you have a Tupperware hand spinning chopper or blender. Okay, so if you don't have a food processor, you can still make this. I like using the food processor because it takes some of the work out of it for me. But really, the only things that are really getting pureed, you really want the garlic pureed. And so what you could do is mash half the lentils, grate the garlic or mince it really fine. But using a kitchen rasp and a grate to grate the garlic, that would be even better because it would get it really fine. And then mash half the lentils and then hand mix the rest. It wouldn't really matter that you haven't like chopped through the rolled oats or the pumpkin seeds. You could even hand chop the pumpkin seeds. So you could totally do that. That would work. Um, onion brand. You know what? This is just any, any grocery store. Go to the spice aisle. I had to get this one today, but it was actually a little more expensive than what I normally get. So I will just suggest like get one of those bags that you get in the spice aisle where you get a lot of spice, right? Like a bag of, you see sometimes bags of dried oregano or dried basil and they usually have dehydrated onion. It usually just says minced onion. So you can get the onion flakes that are a little bigger or minced onion. And that's, that's the way to go. Like I said, this, in, this was all they had in the store. I was surprised that they didn't have the bags. And the bottles are always more expensive or the little bottles, little jars, they're always more expensive. It's kind of silly. And you can also go to the bulk aisle of spices and, and, you know, divvy up a small amount that way too. Thank you. Nancy is saying the recipe's on page 179. Thank you. 179 of Drina's Kind Kitchen right there. And this is the lentil loaf. Of course, this looks much nicer than mine because I've topped mine with a bunch of mushrooms. <laughs> and also Angela did a beautiful job plating it and slicing it. And she has some like very minced, finely minced chives on there, which really looks beautiful, right? Yeah, really nice. Um, so this one is kind of for me replacing the nofu loaf because it's just much easier. It's much faster. And um that's kind of what I wanted to do with Drina's Kind Kitchen is offer really, you know, quick solutions for you. So check that out and look at the recipe renewal tips on the book too. Hey, if you don't have Drina's Kind Kitchen and you want a copy, I did put the link in the description so you can go up there and see. And if you want to add a review on Amazon, of course, I'd love that too. Um, Great question. Um, jo Joanna is asking, I hope I pronounced your name correctly. If it's Johanna or Joanna, lovely name. Are you serving this warm or would it be good chilled? Absolutely would be great chilled. A lot of people make this and then have, you know, if you're making this for a family of two or for yourself and you just don't use all the loaf, then refrigerate it and slice it up put it on sandwiches. Like I've had so many people tell me 
that they do that with the Nofu loaf and this one. Um, you can also, this may sound crazy, but with leftovers, it's one of the tips, you can take pieces of it and just roll it into little meatballs and then bake those up. And you've got like a reheated version of the loaf, like little mini veggie meatballs. And you can have those with a dip or on a marinara, make like a meatball sub, whatever you want to do. Um, but absolutely, you can have it chilled if you prefer. You could break it up over a butter bowl. You could um, add it to a sandwich, whatever you want, right? Top it on a big salad. Mm, I hope I'm giving you guys some ideas. Thank you, One page 179. And I think I've got all the questions. Do you guys have any other questions? Are there any other questions that you might have? It doesn't even have to be about this recipe. Like, any other questions? Hmm. That's a nice tea. I talked a while a minute there, didn't I? <laughs> oh, why? Um, what was it going to say? It's just gone. Yeah. Um, oh, there is something else I was going to mention. Uh, not related to cooking. It's related to fitness and Bellicon. So many of you have asked about Bellicon, my mini trampoline that I use, the rebounder. And I saw a sale go through on the weekend for Bellicon. So I also put the link there for that because so many of you have asked, hey, when you have a sale or when there's a sale, not you, it's not my company, but when there's a Bellicon sale, let me know. It's off It's a lot. It's 200, but it's off their premium model, which is a little more expensive. So I'll just mention that to you. You want to hop over and uh -huh, hop over and look at the Bellicon. Um, yeah, I use mine quite a lot. I really, really love it. And I've been doing more hot yoga too, which I love. So um, let's see where we are on the timer. Oh, look at that. I talked for a good 10 minutes. We're almost done. Um, so I'm going to take it out and see how it looks. It definitely needs more time, right? I've baked it for 10 minutes and it needs a full half hour. And then you take off the foil and let it let the topping like brown up and just get that kind of you know you know when you bake something and, and you just get the edges and the ketchup gets a little bit caramelized on the edges so that's what you're going for but let's see let's see how it's doing it smells good it smells good okay one day I'll figure out how to use my oven. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, so it totally needs more time, but just to show you, it does smell great. And the mushrooms smell really good too on top. So it's gonna, this is heavy too. Like this is a hearty big loaf. This will definitely serve a family. We've got five in our family and they are savages, but this will, <laughs> this will, um, you know, satisfy everyone tonight. I'll probably pair it with, um, I'm thinking I'll pair it with a great big salad because I want to do a big salad tonight. And I might do some more sweet potato wedges or, you know, I don't know. I might bake up something potato-y to go with it, but I'm not sure. But for sure, big salad with it because this is pretty dense and hearty, right? So I'm going to pop this back in the oven. Actually, I'm going to put it on top of the oven for now. I'm going to bake it up later with the foil and turn off the oven. There we are. So that's it, guys. Um, that's the recipe. I hope you guys all give it a try and see how easy it is. And then you can customize it, right? So once you've made a recipe like that, then you go, hmm, I want more garlic. Or, hey, maybe I want some smoked paprika in there. That would be good. Or if you don't like thyme, maybe you add some basil instead or maybe use fresh herbs um i know some people like to add frozen peas to a a loaf so you could mix those in at the end just stir them in so you've got some frozen peas in there right so just some ideas but always helps to make the recipe as is first and then kind of see where you are and customize and, and have fun with it right so today today Oh, and I haven't drawn last week's winner. I haven't drawn for a copy of um, my Plant Powered Snacks ebook because I did the granola from it last week. And if you don't know what 
if you weren't on the video, didn't see it, just hop to my YouTube page and it's, um, I did post a yoga video. So it's a couple of, couple of videos back. Speaking of which, I posted a new yin yoga video. So you can also do that. Um, I'm going to read through the ingredients for you again. <laughs> if I lost it already. So once more, here's the loaf. There it is. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Okay, and I'm going to read the ingredients. So we have, all right, two cups of cooked brown lentils, not red lentils. They're very soft, very mushy. Two cups of cooked brown lentils. The Trader Joe's ones are awesome to use. One cup of cooked orange sweet potato. That's like pre-cooked. Half cup of pre-cooked red or Yukon gold potato. And again, you could sub in more orange. One clove of garlic, quarter cup of tomato paste, three tablespoons of tamari or soy sauce, three tablespoons of dried onion flakes, two tablespoons of flax meal, one tablespoon of balsamic vinegar, one tablespoon of tahini. I use pumpkin seed butter. I do prefer tahini in it though. One teaspoon of dried oregano or one tablespoon fresh one half teaspoon of dried thyme or one and a half teaspoons fresh, one half teaspoon of celery seed, black pepper to taste, two cups of rolled oats, and a quarter cup of pumpkin seeds. And then again, you use half of the lentils to start, and then you mix the other half in at the very end with the oats and the pumpkin seeds. And then the topping, you can either do a half cup of um, more, a half cup extra, of cooked sweet potato and mash it up and then just season it with some salt or three to four tablespoons of ketchup on its own or mixed with barbecue sauce and that's it that's it super easy so um next week for next week video the entry i will draw next week but the entry for this week the giveaway the giveaway will be a copy of dreamless kind kitchen okay that's a big one it's a big giveaway so to enter for the giveaway, and I will draw the winner of the snacks later today and comment on YouTube with the winner, um, go to YouTube, okay? So I'm going to be hosting the giveaway on YouTube. So if you're on Facebook, just link over and find me on YouTube. Just search my name, you'll find me, and go to this video. And in the comments, not the chat that's here now, but the comments after, I want you to share a comment about a recipe in Dream is Kind Kitchen that you're loving, or if you don't have Dream is Kind Kitchen, um, what, let's see, what chapter, what recipe chapter you'd like to cook from the most? Soups, desserts, yeah, just anything about, about uh, cooking, vegan cooking, anything, just comment hello, <laughs> enjoy the video, whatever, just to get your comment in, okay, and then I'll draw a winner from the YouTube comments um, next week. So make sure you hop over to the YouTube or if you're on YouTube now, comment after the replay. Okay. And comment there. So that's where I will draw the winner. And please also like and subscribe on YouTube. That would be wonderful too. And that's it from the wet coast today. Hope you, in, it's spring break here. I don't know if I mentioned that we have two weeks of spring break. So um, we're hoping it's going to shape up here for the weather. And if anyone wants to hook me up in Hawaii, I'll be very, very grateful. <laughs> okay, have a great day, guys. That's it from me today. Uh, much love to you all, and I'll be back soon. Bye.